Presenting the adventures of Jungle Jim. Last week, Jungle Jim, Shanghai Lil, and O.P. Watts arrived at Fort Jamrud, where they found that Bob and Connie McGuire had stopped a few hours before and then continued their journey into the Afghan hills. Jim and Lil started on their trail immediately, hoping to catch them before morning. We also found that Jim and Lil were not the only ones who knew that Bob and Connie were in the jungle. In the hills ahead, the mysterious Maharaja of Ebor awaited their coming. Unknown to the authorities, the Maharaja had seized an old lamasery, imprisoned its monks, and is using the place for his own sinister purpose. The thrilling adventures of Jungle Jim are pictured each Sunday in the Comic Weekly, the world's greatest pictorial supplement of humor and adventure. The Comic Weekly, each page printed in full color, is distributed everywhere as an integral part of your Hearst Sunday newspaper. And now we continue our story. It is beginning to grow light as Jim and Lil ride northward through the jungle after a night spent on the trail of Bob and Connie McGuire. Unknown to them, they are heading directly into the Maharaja's trap. It's beginning to get light, Lil. If we don't find Bob and Connie before long, we'll have to turn back. Well, they can't be far away, Jim. We've certainly covered as much ground during the night as the McGuire's covered yesterday. Mm, seems that way. Wait, Lil. I want to have a look at the map. Well, we must have missed their trail somewhere in the darkness. Come on, we've got to find them. Wait, Lil. According to the map, there's a lamasery a few miles ahead. There so what? There's lots of them around here. Yes, but this one is marked Buddhist monks. And that means the travelers are always welcome. Jim, if Connie and Bob knew that, they may have stopped there last night instead of making camp in the hills. Well, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Well, then let's get going. At least we can get something to eat there. I'm sorry. I know, but wait a minute, Lil. Here's something else. This map shows a caravan road to the west of it. We must have missed it in the night. Oh, we can come back to that after. No, it'd be easier if we headed straight west to the road and then followed that to the lamasery. There's a chance we might meet the McGuire's. Well, whichever way we go, let's get started. Neither one of us has had anything to eat since we stopped yesterday noon. Come on. All right. You know, Jim, I can't forget those natives we stopped last night. When we questioned them about Bob and Connie, one of the younger boys started to say something. But the one on the white horse stopped him. Well, the natives aren't very friendly in this part of the world, Lil. You heard what Colonel Hammond said. The same. I think they knew who we were talking about. The one on the white horse was caught off his guard for a moment. Oh, he was just surprised to find us traveling alone at night. Unless these natives know you, they never will talk. I didn't like their look. Well, to be perfectly frank, I didn't either. Lil, wait a minute. Oh. What's the matter now? Hand me those glasses. Something is moving on that hill ahead of us. It might be a caravan. Here you are, Jim. Well, is it a caravan? No. There are 20 or 30 men on horses, and they're armed. I can see the sun flash off their rifles. Well, they're probably native British troops. I don't think so, Lil. And there's another thing that makes me wonder. The man who looks like their leader is riding a white horse. You mean it's the same one we met last night? I don't know. I can't make him out from here. There's not many white horses in this part of Afghanistan, Lil. Well, come on. Let's go talk to him. There's one or two questions I'd like to ask him. I wasn't satisfied with his answers. Hold last on, Lil. Hold on. I don't like the looks of that bunch. There's no doubt but they're hillmen and unfriendly. Well, they're not going to start anything with us, at least not so near the fort. Maybe not, but just the same, I think we ought to investigate. Most of these natives are too poor to own horses, and these men are not only well-mounted, but well-armed. And I don't believe they're regular soldiers. What are you getting at? Just this. We know that Bob and Connie McGuire were threatened with death if they came into this territory. And we haven't been able to find anyone who's seen them since they left the fort yesterday morning. And if that's the same man on that white horse that we met last night, then... If it is, I think we ought to find out what they're up to. From the position they're in now, they can watch every caravan coming through Khyber Pass without being seen. We'll leave our horses here and go ahead on foot, Lil. Okay, Jim, if you say so. Let's get started. Yeah. All right. <laughs> now we'll, we'll keep out of sight and get as near to them as we can. Watch out for those bushes, Lil. They're covered with thorns. Ouch! I'll say they are. Will you get into some of the darndest places? Well, I told you to watch yourself. <laughs> we haven't far to go, Lil. We can climb the side of that hill and get close enough to get a good look at that gang. Keep down now. We don't want to be seen. Wait, Jim. <laughs> that hill is steep. Oh, come on, Lil. We can make it. 
Uh, I'll go ahead and, and give you a hand. Uh, are you all right? Yes, I guess so. Be careful. Give me a hand. All right, Lil. Wait. Oui. Now, let's get behind these bushes. Can you see them from here? Yes. Say, the man with the white horse is the one we met last night. Look, he's dismounted. He's talking to someone. You're right, it is the same one. I wish you could hear what they're saying. Let's see if we can get a little closer without being seen. Jim. What's the matter? Look at that other man. He just turned this way. It's the silent one. You're right, Lil. Come on. We've got to hear what those two are talking about. Careful. This is close enough. If we get any nearer, they'll see us. We have Yes, Master. The four whom you are seeking, Patria Shepherdry, the white man who carried the map went toward the lavatory late yesterday afternoon. And the other? A man and a woman, Master. They went through the path during the night. You're right, Lil. The man who carries the map is McGuire. Listen. You know what you are to do. None of the four must be allowed to go back to the south. It shall be as you say, Master. The one with the map is McGuire. He and his wife are probably at the lavatory now. <laughs> if so, we do not need to worry about them. The others are also to go there? Yes. They can go, but they must not be allowed to return to the fort. If you fail, it will mean death. Well, they've got a nice little party ready for us, Jim. Eh? Yes, but we're not going to it. Come on. We've heard all that we need to. We've got to get to the lamasery and warn Bob and Connie. Wait, Jim. The sound when stop talking. Hmm? They're both watching us. Get on the other side. Have lunch. Jim, what does it mean? What are they watching? And there's probably a caravan coming through. Listen, Lil. They are to be allowed to pass. Of course, you boy. And I'll be back at Hanson. You are all right to keep out of sight. And to do only as you have been told. That's enough, Lil. I've got a plan. Come on. Well, what are you going to do? Wait until we get over the ledge and I'll tell you. Watch it. We don't want to make any noise. I'll go over first. All right. Well, at least it was easier coming down than it was climbing up. Oh, well, what's your plan? Come on. We'll get back to our horses. And then get over to the road without being seen. You're going to head for the llama Street? I am. But you're going back to the pass with a caravan that's coming through. Now, wait a minute. That caravan is headed north. And anyway, I'm not going to leave you. Listen, Lil. We're headed for trouble. And so is Bob McGuire and his wife. I'm going to stop that caravan and bribe them to turn back. You can conceal yourself somehow and get back through the pass that way. I get it. You want me to go to Colonel Hammond? Exactly. Here's our horses. We've got to make it fast, Lil. Here, I'll help you out. Oh, thanks. That's the girl. Now, we'll circle and hit the caravan road around the next bend of the north. That gang of cutthroats won't be able to see us there. But suppose whoever's at the head of this caravan refuses to turn around and go back south. If they're natives, they'll probably think we're crazy. Just the same. We've got to make them do it. Don't you see what's going on, Lil? The silent one is going to try to take us all prisoners. He's after the map that McGuire's got. I don't see why he hasn't taken it. He's had chances enough. But from what he said up there on the hill, McGuire and his wife have given him the slip. We know that they're disguised. You've got to get back to Fort Jammerd and warn Colonel Hammond. I'll go on to the Lamasar. Everything will be all right if we can get to Bob and Connie in time. You mean you hope everything will be all right? I don't like this much. I'd like to know who this silent one is and who he's working for. Well, we know part of that answer now. We'll find the rest out quick enough. We know that his master's after the jewels hidden by the great Genghis Khan. And that he's not going to stop at anything until he gets McGuire's map, showing where they're hidden. Oh, Jim, pull up. There's the road. All right. There's less chance of us being seen from the hill if we leave our horses back here. All right. Yeah, hey. no, you stay Come on, Lil. That caravan must be almost here by now. Well, Jim, look, it's coming around the curve now. And the soldiers, Lil. That means we may be able to send word back to Colonel Hammond and go on together. Jim, don't you know who that is? There's only one man in Afghanistan who'd ride a horse and carry an umbrella over him to keep the sun off. <laughs> O.P. Watts. And that's Colonel Hammond riding beside him. Come on. Colonel Hammond! O.P. Well, they see us. Let's go meet him. Hello, Hammond. Well, hello there. We were looking for you. Yeah, that's right, that's right. 
Colonel Hamilton insisted that we start out practically before breakfast. Yes, before breakfast. And in this boiling sun, too. Never mind that, O.P. Mr. Freeland and I haven't eaten since yesterday noon. Colonel, we've got some information for you. I was just going to attempt to smuggle myself back to the past. Smuggle yourself? What, what do you mean? If you're going to stop here for a little while, I'm getting off of this animal. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah. Now, suppose you two explain what you meant by saying that you were about to smuggle yourself back through the past. There's free passage through Khyber Pass. Hmm. Maybe it's free, but it still isn't worth the trouble it takes to go through it. Give it, O.P., this is serious. Colonel Hammond, do you ever hear of a man who calls himself the Silent One? Indeed I have. He's one of the most notorious bandits along the frontier. Strikes like an avenging shadow, hence his name. Well, he almost struck at us this morning, Colonel. Uh, you? You mean he's near here? He and a band of his men were up on that hill behind you a few minutes ago. What? We overheard him issue orders to his men that Jim and I and Connie and Bob McGuire were not to be allowed to return through Khyber Pass. Uh, this is amazing, amazing. I had no idea he was here. Yeah, neither did I. I thought we left the fellow back in Calcutta. If he had any sense, he would have stayed there. He's more comfortable. Hmm. This is serious, Mr. Watts. The Silent One is in league with another desperado. He exiled Maharaja of Ibor. That makes it doubly bad for your daughter and her husband, Mr. Watts. What do you mean by that, Colonel? Have you heard from Bob and Connie? It's because of them that I brought my men through the pass this morning, Bradley. They've been deserted by their native guide. What'd you say? Yes, one of my officers guarding Khyber Pass reported that the natives who were with Mr. Watts' daughter and her husband returned through the pass headed south late last night, and that they were alone. You're sure of that, Colonel? Yes, the officer said that he was positive. He let them go through because he couldn't place them at first. Later, he remembered that they were the men who had gone through with young McGuire and his wife in the morning. That means that Bob and Connie are alone somewhere in the hills. Yeah, that's just like young McGuire. He always did want to be alone with Connie. Mm, keep quiet, O.P. What? Colonel, yes? we know that the silent one is determined to get a map McGuire is carrying. Mm -hmm. And we also know that he's somewhere near here with his men. We've got to get McGuire first. You're right, Bradley. Have you tried the lamasery? Oh, we were headed for there before we saw you. Hmm. Well, now you might find your friends there, Bradley. I'm going to take my men and search these hills. Uh, the old monk will tell you anything he knows. By the way, you must be hungry. We'll get you something to eat. Oh, never mind that. We haven't got time. Come on, Lil. Uh, uh, amazing. They're actually running away from another meal. Hey, hey, come back, I say. We haven't got time, O.P. We've got to find your daughter before the silent one does. Or you may never see her alive again. <laughs> Jim and Lil are heading for the old lamasery without knowing that it is now in the hands of the desperate Maharaja of Ebor. Will they escape his trap? The adventures you have just heard dramatized will appear in full-color action pictures in the Comic Weekly, the big Comic Weekly distributed with your Hearst Sunday newspaper everywhere. In the world's greatest pictorial supplement of humor and adventure, you will find all the famous characters who live in the world of color pictures. There's the Katzenjammer Kids, Jiggs and Maggie, Barney Google, Toots and Casper, The Little King... Flash Gordon and Gags and Gals. See all these famous characters in your copy of next Sunday's Comic Weekly. And don't forget our date next week. Same time, same station for a continuation of the adventures of Jungle Jim. Jungle Jim.